Hello everyone, welcome back to The Lab's Toe 2. This time we'll be discussing Komachi Onozuka, the dropped and low plateaued Shinigami. So, as you can tell, um, Komachi might be a little strong. Her base HP stat is in fact not 238. Uh, this is an inflated stat. I will get to her real stat later. I apologize, uh, but I was not actually prepared. I totally forgot that I actually inflated her base value with um, this good old tin down here that you're seeing. Though I do know her, she has the greatest HP stat in the game. Her attack stat is, of course, 136, base defense of 40, base magic of 64, base mind of 40, and base speed of 76. So otherwise, she has a half decent attack, but most of her other stats are very low, with some of the lowest mind in the game. Of course, I do have, uh, as you can obviously see on the right with the status level, the most library points into her. Um, so these are not her actual level 1 stats, because <laughs> if they were, this would be kind of absurd. Her level 1 stats are actually 169 HP, uh, 20 MP, 72 HP, uh, 72 attack, uh, 24 defense, 36 magic, 24 mind, and 102 speed. So going back to uh, her base stats, her base HP stat is actually one, uh, 208, uh, yeah, 218, which is not that much lower. I only increased it by 20. Her base MP recovery is 3, her base TP is eight, uh, 28, the highest in the game, and her base um, HP is 14. Of course, not the greatest HP and MP recovery, but decent overall. Her base stats resistances are 20 in Poison Paralysis, 0 in Heavy and Debuff, 40 in sh to Shock and Silence, 80 to Tear, and 160 to Death, the highest in the game. Other than that, let's look at her elemental affinities, with 80 in Fire and Wind, 144 in Cold and Spirit, 100 in Mystic, 188 in Dark, and 124 in Physical. Overall, she has some fairly decent um, overall elemental affinities, though she does have three minor weaknesses. Not any bad weaknesses, but three minor weaknesses, which is not the greatest. Of course, uh, for her element, uh, for her status ailments, Debuff is the only one she's really weak to, and we'll discuss why that is actually a good thing later on. So, looking at just her stats, you'd say that Komachi is a pure HP tank, but with those defenses in mind, surely she can't be that great, can she? Well, let's look at some of her moves. Oh, I guess I should mention, sorry, her level of difficulty is 64, which means she is very hard to level up, and her library cost is 53, meaning she has some pretty... Uh, some decently hefty library expenses. Again, maybe not the best character. Well, let's see what her moves do. Starting off with the cost of 3 MP, a single target physical spell. Uh, there's a direct attack. It is short life expectancy with a damage formula of 195 uh, minus 66% of your opponent's defense. So, decent defense piercing. Has an effect of 100 death, which obviously all death will have 100 effects since death is an insta kill. Uh, delay of 58, and the death rate is 36 plus the skill level. So, at the start, this is one of the highest death rate, uh, highest chances of proccing death at 40 at level 1, but at level 5, you get up to 56%. Not bad, not bad. Of course, most bosses are resistant against death. Note on most, not all. Next up, we have Farage in the Deep Fog. It hits an enemy road for Cold Element. Uh, for, it costs 5 MP and has a damage formula of 180% of, of your attack, minus 90% of the opponent's defense, so it doesn't pierce very much. It can also inflict death, as well as, um, uh, yeah, it can also inflict death, and has a delay of 54, so not bad. Um, not the greatest, but not bad. And has a death rate of 33 plus... Uh, 3 times the skill level, so that is, at the base, that is, um, 36, but at level 5, you get up to 48%, so still not bad death chance for hitting multiple targets. 
Finally, we have probably her trump card. 6 MP, so a little bit since her base MP, as I mentioned, was 20, which is fairly good, but only gets 1 every 12 levels. Um, but yeah, she can use this move. 6 MP is not that much. Hits all enemies with a spirit type attack based off 400, a whopping 400% of your magic. Though it is minus 100% of your opponent's mind, so it does not have any piercing and is kinda. So its damage is not the greatest because of that. Um, but it has the ability to inflict a 3,333% paralysis effect, a, a 16,000 tear effect, and of course death. It has a 40% delay, which is rather large. The, the death rate is 29 plus 3 times the skill level, so at level 1 that is 32, and at level 5 that is 44. So the lowest, but still not bad. It also has a paralysis rate of 36 plus the skill level times 4, so it starts off at 40 and goes up to 56. The tear rate at 56 times skill level plus four, skill level times 4, so that is a base of 60 and goes up to 76 tear rate, so it has a decent chance of flicking tear. It also can lower attack, defense, magic, mind, and speed um, by 16%. Every single one, each one has an equal 60% chance flat that doesn't go up by level of being inflicted. Next up, and lastly, we have Sight that Chooses the Dead. This is based. This is hits a single enemy with a Spirit type attack that does that costs 6 MP and does 300% of your attack by 75% of your um, by 75% of your opponent's defense and has 40% delay and no special effects. This actually hits decently hard but with the 135 attack. Which, yeah, is the same as Yomu, so it can do some decent damage if you invest in attack. Now, other than this one having a lot of status effects and that debuff, she doesn't seem to have too much that's good since this is a magic attack and she has very low base magic coming in at a measly 72, uh, 64 base. She's not going to be hitting very hard, and even though Sight that chooses the dead could hit very hard, it has no special effects and a very long delay, and I guess Spirit isn't the best in some cases. You'll get better Spirit attackers later. She starts off with uh, an attack, HP, and Mind boost. I added the defense boost later on. Very good for her, um, especially the HP since that's exactly what you want on her, and of course she has more bit hard and hands-on experience. Besides that though, she has the Shinigami's work, which adds an extra death effect to all attacks. If they already have one, which is every single one except for the, her last skill, the effect will be increased. So again, this allows her to get really good instant death. Any boss not with instant death, you can cheese out with instant death, and you can clear floors with um, some instant death effects. So not only is she a great HP, just plubber tank, she can also deal some damage by just insta killing things. Anything that is not resistant to it. Uh, Wage of the Sanzu River increases my drop by skill level times 2, so up to 20, costing 10 points in total, though if to reduce if you're not at the front line. Remember how it said debuffs are not that bad? Flexibility. If the user has a mind or a defense debuff, it is calculated as a buff. Debuff teams will be a big thing later on, so keep those in mind. This makes her very good on debuff teams, which, like I meant, just mentioned, are some of, if not the best teams to run. She, of course, like any good tank, has regeneration ability. Though boasting by far the best HP in the game, this is kinda stupid. I'll just show you how stupid it is later on. This is probably her god tier ability. On other characters, this is just an okay ability. For her, this ability is actually just one of the best abilities in the game. Next up, God of uh, Ido Ko, Ido Ko, God of Death. When the user takes damage, there's a 25% chance to counter attack. Uh, enemies with the spirit attack, the, if the attack has a death effect, or if the enemies attack KO's an ally, the counter attack chance becomes 100%. If that it was an attack that KO'd an enemy, the counter attack damage is increased. Man, this is a very underwhelming in terms of damage ability, though it is based off your attack, so you could run in a, a higher attack Komachi that would actually be able to deal some damage. Um, though early on, since everything has such low defense, 
and this has good base damage, I believe. It is no notion of how much damage it gives. Um, but it does do decent base damage, meaning early game this could be used to cheese out some fights by throwing away all your allies and sacrificing them to the god of death so that she can get off these counterattacks. And of course this will be going off quite often against her since you have a 25% chance and you'll be taking a lot more than 4 hits, meaning you're more than likely going to get one of these off just by statistics, even if no one dies. So overall, not bad, the damage just falls off late game unless you build a full damage. Next up, Eye for an Eye. When the damage by an enemy attack is increased by skill level times 5. A 10% attack boost isn't anything to write home about, but increasing the God of Death and just giving you a little bonus is not too bad, especially early game before your damage falls off and you have better physical attackers. And then of course, that is our last ability, so overall, she doesn't seem that great. I mean, she's a fairly hard boss battle because of instant death and some of her debuff stuff. And Like, she isn't that good, is she? Well, flexible, like, yeah, she isn't. Like, none of this stuff is that good except for two, two things. Narrow confines of Avishi is, it has such a high chance of inflicting all these different things, especially the debuff, that she works that she can just spam this, and it already gives some massive effects in battle without ever needing to actually deal damage. In terms of just being a solid damage sponge, she works like no one else. No one comes close. Well, we'll, we'll talk about one character that can take literally zero damage. But other than her, no one else comes anywhere close to the amount of tanking ability that she has. As you can see, I did invest quite a bit into her. But she's worth it. As you, at level 1, she has 1,650. That is over 4 times almost anyone else, with the exception of Riggle, who also is running energy packs. Let's take those off. And let's just take those off. No equipment for you. Oh, see? Okay, let's take these off. Yep, over 4 times everyone else except for Minoriko in my party. Now, granted, there are other characters like Yomu who could probably get about maybe half of that if I invested, but like, Komachi's just so absurd. Now, so let me level up everyone. Alright, so Komachi reaches level 147. As you can see, this is greatly less than everyone else. Well, let's give her some equipment. How about... Oh, let's say... What, what is the dice on? Uh, oops. Sorry, give me one second here. I'm going to unequip all characters. So I can have every equipment in the game that I have unlocked, which is of course all of them, in my party. So that's 128 HP. Let's see here. 128 HP. 2, oh, there's 240. Whatever. Let's get three of these on. 240. Is there anything better than 240? 160. Nope. And then let's throw a first aid kit on her. 72,703. Now then, how good is regeneration ability on her then? 10%. What is 10% of 7,000? 72,000? That is... 7,270 HP restored every turn. That is more than almost anyone in my party. That is more than Riggle. And keep in mind, Riggle has a base 152 HP. And she, Riggle over here, has less base HP than what I am restoring every turn. Yeah. Komachi doesn't need healing. Komachi's healing is absurd. Combined with the fact that who cares if you only have 2,000 defense. Yeah, you get more out of a lot of other characters. But it, you just don't care about losing HP. You just don't. You get percentage HP back so easily. Not to mention that's going to get buffed up real quick with flexibility. But yeah... 
she I've never seen anyone take hits like her with the exception of one character. So let's go over subclasses. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, but there's a few subclasses that you want to take. First, Monk is okay. She gets a little bit of extra healing, which is not bad. Because, you know, percent HP healing is always good when you have the most ridiculous HP pull and like twice everyone else's HP in the game. It's pretty good. Warrior, I mean, you can use her early game as an attacker, but her attack stat becomes sort of meh after getting better and better characters later on in the game. Sorcerer, no, her magic stat is pretty bad and her only magic move is mostly has is mostly only used for um I mean yeah it does have 400% scaling which is pretty nice but it, it doesn't have any piercing effect it's mostly just used for um the debuffs she doesn't have any healing skills doesn't have any buffing skills she does have a debuff skill but it isn't that great so I wouldn't bother with it increasing ailments might be good if you want to increase your death effect but that's a still a cheese strategy so I wouldn't recommend it her uh, MP is not that great that you would want to do this and honestly, it's just a waste of a slot. You could do this, but it's a bit inefficient, and you'd much rather just start spamming those debuffs as much as possible. She works as a great debuffer, and there's no reason not to use... Like, that's one of the big things about uh, Komachi. Nail Confines of Avishi is just so good that you want to use it every turn. You just... M many characters just have like, okay, I don't... I can use, I have some moves, but I don't really know what I want to use, so I can take a subclass to use one of their skills. Like, no, Komachi, she has one skill that is never bad in any situation. I don't know of a single battle in which Neocon Vines of Avicii is ever bad. It's always, like, her most optimal move out of any subclass, any anything. Next up, Strategist. Um, not bad, it'll, since... Of course, Komachi will not die very easily at all. She'll stay out for quite a while and give the buff. But the problem is, is that it's still not... It's still less tankiness than what you want, and Komachi doesn't really do much other than just be a giant wall. So, you want to get as much wally as possible. Again, with Gambler, by the time you get it, you're probably going to have better attackers, so you can run it, but just not that great compared to what else you could run. Diva is Diva, you have no... Uh, no synergy with it. Transcendent increases all your stats, which is not bad, but again, you're not getting as much out of your tankiness as you could. So let's go back to Guardian. Obviously, Guardian is crazy good. HP, defense, and mind, as well as physical affinity, all very good for her. She has the best TP in the game, and she can get more of it, not that that really matters. All of these, uh, all the first three, um... Abilities all work very well with her. She doesn't lose it. She doesn't have any anti synergies with any of them. She's just overall very good. So, what do I rank her? Just a quick reminder that we have S, C, F, Borderline 1, Borderline 3, Borderline 2, C, S, E, and then, um,. I believe we put her in borderline 2. And then Kamachi is our first S+. In this game, I have awarded 1, 2... Um... I believe only 2. If I'm correct. Yes, I only have 2 S-pluses in the entire game. And Komachi is one of them. Of course, like Kina, Rumia, Parse... Well, not really poor save. Hina, Rumia, I did consider them for S+. I did consider Byakuin for S+, for a little bit. But in the end, there's only two S+,s, and Komachi is definitely one of them. There's only been, like, two battles in the entire game in which I have even considered not using Komachi. Komachi is the best tank in the game by far. You get other tanks later in the game, but they're all woefully inadequate and completely obsolete in the face of Komachi. Anyways, I've fangirled enough over this character, and so now I'm going to go back to playing her in good old Soku. And so, until next time, see ya.